Hey, Coach. Um, hey, Ira. The, uh, the play Brendan makes, well, I think it was credited to Brendan, the, the play, the, the forced fumble coming out of the half, um, you know, that seemed like just an enormous play in the game. Um, how good was that for him? You know, I know he had a couple other plays, he had the interception as well, but how good do you think this game overall was for him uh, in his development? Yeah, I thought BG really played his best game by far, you know, and it's it's really been mounting. I think these past couple weeks have given him a chance to really train the right way. Um, you know, he was so limited early in the year, but, you know, he was really involved. I know he, he was credited with the forced fumble. He had the one pick, but he had the other pick on the uh, Jarion Jones called PI in the end zone too. So, I mean, he was around the ball. I mean, that third one was huge. I thought, you know, the way we had to step up in the second half in the opening series there to get it to a third and one, have the ball bounce. Um, you know, Amari Gaina had coverage and, and Steven was chased from inside out. BG's in the post there and he's got to come out of the post on a quarterback run play. And to make that hit and to keep the ball in bounds for Marty to recover, it was a huge play for us. Huge momentum, then have our offense to respond. I thought in the second half, the way we came out with those fir first four series stops, um, with the takeaways, I thought that was a, a big momentum changer for our football team. Hey Adam, I'm curious to get your thoughts. Uh, well, two part question, I guess. One, the impact that Hampson Nazarene made, and, and then two, the reaction to his interception from the sideline. Been coaching for a while. Is that one of the one of your unique responses you've seen in your time? Um, you know, there's a lot of unique things that have happened uh, this year, but. You know, Ham, really proud. I mean, if you just look at the interception, it just his progression, I mean, he, he's out there and, you know, he, he's playing, he's got his knees bent, but just progression. You know, the, the tight end runs an Ohio route, his eyes snap to one, sees the release, gets his eyes back to the queue and catches a tip. And it's kind of exactly the way you think it would go, you know, just where he would be in that place in the field. But the thing about Ham is you got – you really don't have questions about his, his preparedness, his preparation. And then, you know, there's some competitive um, expectations there. When your number's called, you make the play, which he does. And i um, so proud of him, so excited for him, the smile on his face, um, to see him, you know, after that play and to see our team react the way they did. Um, you know, the other time was when he finally got back there ready to play in that NC State game. You know, you felt the same amount of energy that Ham brings to this football program. So I was proud of him, uh, and I was happy for him. Next will be Antoine Staley from Tallahassee Democrat. Hey, Adam, um, just to talk about the defense and uh, just kind of uh, the adversity that they faced on Saturday and how you think they handled that. You want me to get that, Antoine? <laughs> uh, no, but I thought, you know, Antoine, you know, the, to start off, the, you know, we, we had to start fast as a, as a team. And, you know, not that you ever n don't want to start fast, but to start with the first three possessions and, you know, force two quick punts and an interception, I thought that was critical. Um, and then obviously, you know, by, you know, the, sh the long kickoff return, then we give up the, the sluggo route into the end zone. We come back, our t offense turns the ball over, BG picks the ball off you know, to kind of answer that sudden change. But then we give up a quick score and then a long drive with just a PI, third down conversion. You know, so you're going in the locker room and you played really well early. Um, and then you gave up some, some mistakes there at the end of the first half. But then to come back in the second half and have four straight stops, two being takeaways, I thought that was huge uh, just with the momentum. And, you know, at that point, you know, that's kind of, you know, really create the momentum for us to finish that game off. You've got two true freshman linebackers and Stephen Dix and DJ Lenda who've been, both been asked to step into pretty significant roles in their first year. I guess how much growth have you seen from them just because of the responsibility that's been thrust onto them? Yeah, well, a great amount um, of respect for both those guys. You know, and what Stephen's done and. You know, it was really, you know, Stephen was a mid-year enrollee, so he was able to be here for the offseason. Um, you know, DJ was a little bit dinged up there in camp and early in the season. So, you know, Stephen's opportunities um, were a little bit more. Just, you know, he, he deserved it all. Uh, but he is making the most of it. I mean, there's still some mistakes that he knows he's got to clean up. But, you know, he's learning under fire, and he's getting better because of it. Um, DJ Lundy, I think, is, I mean, he's got, 
he's got the it factor from from a standpoint of you see him react to plays and you know whether it's at fullback, whether it's inside linebacker, whether it's him covering covering a kickoff. Um, you know, just a lot of natural football things that he has to him. Um, he was somebody we got to know late in the recruiting process, but boy, I'm glad we got him. I think he's going to have a great career here at Florida State. But, you know, it is. You look out there and, you know, Amari was out there, but Steven and, and DJ are lined up next to each other. Um, and we got banged up there late. And, uh, you know, excited to see those two play together. And we'll be seeing that a lot moving forward. Coach, when you go into a week like Duke week and, and you analyze and see that they, they turn the ball over, you make that a point of emphasis when you're talking to your team. Uh, you practice it, you drill it all week long, and then it pays off in a game. I guess what's kind of the residual or the, you know, the, the product uh, for you after you're able to kind of put that all together and, and what can that do for the psyche of a team? Well, I think, you know, I, I just had Josh Kando up in my office, actually, and, um, you know, we, we were talking about that of, you know, there's some competitive excellence that needs to take place, right? A ball gets tipped, and maybe your eyes are in the wrong place, and you're not where you should be, and the ball hits the ground aimlessly, and, you know, most of Florida State Nation has no idea what would have happened, but we in the locker room look and say, that should be our ball. We should make that play. Well, you know, early in, you know, second series, Ham gets himself in the right position, Emmett forces a high throw, and next thing you know, he's got a pick. Um, Travis J, you know, put himself in, in the right position. You know, BG's forced takeaway was with a great effort play, you know, in a violent collision. Um, you know, Brennan Gant's other pick, you know, they run a four by one empty play and they give us a play that really you hadn't seen uh, as far as just the way the bubble and the wheel played out off of a double post. And, you know, he was heads up enough to be able to match the route and then the ball's in the air and you know, it falls on the ground or incomplete. Everybody just claps their hands, but you go and finish the play. And that's what good teams do. They make those one-on-one -on -one plays. Um, they execute in a way. And that does build some momentum uh, to answer your question. You know, once, once that happens, it kind of gives everybody the confidence that they can and they will. Um, so it was good to see, especially from the safety position, that we've been shuffling guys in and out throughout the year to see um, Travis, BG, and Ham all make significant impact plays was definitely positive. Right, we'll go back to Ira for more chance. So uh, Kenny said the reason Treshawn Ward, I guess one of the reasons he's gotten this opportunity is because of how much success he was having on the scout team uh, against your defense. How, wh what did you see from him? Uh, did you see uh, the potential from him when he was running on the scout team offense? Yeah, I mean, we've, you know, anytime you're on the scout team, you know, we put guys in positions to try to simulate what the other teams are, or who they are positionally. So Treshawn was our tailback for a number of weeks. And, I mean, he has legitimate change of direction and, sh and quickness. And um, he's competitive. And he had the risk, you know, you're in your own scout team. I mean, there's a lot of contact that happens. Guys knock him sideways, but he keeps picking himself up. And, you know, the, the effort he showed, the respect level that uh, our guys had for him, you know, we knew there'd be a place for him on this football team, um, whether it's in special teams, whether it's on offense, touching the ball, whatever that looks like. But, um, yeah, Trey Sean's got legitimate skills, and um, he's got a big team heart for himself. Uh, to help this football team. So uh, we were excited. Um, I know the whole sidelines were when he got in the end zone on that first carry. Back to and I was also wondering, it sounds like on offense, some of the linemen have um, gotten a better understanding conceptually of what they're supposed to be doing uh, for, during the course of a game, even when things change. Are you seeing the same thing on the defense? Not specifically even about Saturday, but just in practices. Are you, as the season wears on, are you seeing some of that? Uh, from the defense? Yeah, I think once you start settling in, you know, with guys that are playing in multiple games at the same position, we are seeing that. Um, there are some things that, you know, you're not seeing it because guys are still getting shifted around at times, which is just what you got to do right now. Um, but I think consistency with the plan, consistency with the positions, and also you take an effect when guys play next to each other, they get a feel for how that's going to play together, both from a communication and a comfortability and a trust. Um, you know, we all wish you just put 11 guys out there and they're all going to trust each other unequivocally every play. You know, but all of a sudden this piece gets changed, that piece gets changed. Um, 
you're not only asking guys to do different things, but now their teammates next to him say, all right, is it going to get done this the way that I thought it was going to get done with this guy? So I think the trust, the execution, it's all part of the cycle of playing good football. And, um, you know, I think we are seeing, um, we are seeing that, that come together. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, guys.